You're watching Tag TV. Hello and welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about the breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Pakistan using diplomatic missions to push fake currency into India for terror funding. Pakistan bad terrorists launch grenade blast in Kashmir. Asia Pacific group of FATF slams Pakistan for non-compliance on its recommendations. And deadly terror attack rocks Jalalabad. Pakistan, a country which is surviving on IMF bailout, is conspiring to destabilize the sixth largest economy of the world. Yes, it is working relentlessly to damage Indian economy. Apart from the conventional satanic plots, Islamabad's playbook now includes flooding of Indian markets with fake Indian currency notes. State airlines and diplomatic missions are being used extensively to facilitate these designs. Since it cannot trespass Indian boundaries, the sovereign territories of Nepal and Bangladesh are exploited. Terrorists backed by a Pak army are also fed and fostered through this syndicate. We have a detailed report. Three years after India demonetized high currency notes to crack down on black money, Pakistan has started producing, smuggling and circulating better quality fake Indian currency notes to finance illicit activities and militant groups, including the lashkar e -Toyba and its affiliates, jesh Muhammad. Senior officials reveal that a large amount of counterfeit currency from Pakistan is making its way into India using pre-2016 system and infrastructure of gangs, their syndicate, channels and routes. Most surprisingly, Pakistan has been misusing diplomatic channels in Nepal, Bangladesh and other countries to bring and distribute consignments of fake Indian currency notes. Pakistan's own economy is in doldrums. It wants Indian economy also to meet the same, same fate. And that is why it is pumping in fake currency into India. And this fake currency is being used as a parallel economy to fund the terrorists and the terror sympathizers in this country. Sources reveal that Pakistan's secret agency, the ISI, manages to create this currency of better visual quality than the earlier photocopied notes. In May 2019, a recently released D Company associate, Yunus Ansari, was arrested with three Pakistani nationals at Kathmandu airport with a huge consignment of Indian currency totaling Indian rupees 76.7 million. The consigner was notorious Pakistan-based FICN smuggler Razak Marfani. Interestingly, the same Yunus was arrested a few years ago in Nepal for conspiring to implement a hit job on Indian diplomat in Kathmandu. The company is uh, totally under the control of ISI. Daud Abraham is... Uh, living in Pakistan under the protection of the ISI and the complete infrastructure of Daud company, that is the D company, is being used not only to smuggle fake currency but also to smuggle arms and whenever ISI wants any major incident to be carried out in India, it takes the services of D company. On September 22nd, police in Punjab seized FICN worth rupees 1 million from Sikh radical elements belonging to the Khalistan Zindabad force, which had also received five AK-47 rifles, 30 bore pistols, nine hand grenades, five satellite phones, two mobile phones and two wireless sets sent across the international border with Pakistan through drones. Again on September 25th, police in Dhaka seized fake Indian currency notes worth rupees 4.95 million. A Dubai-based individual, Salman Shera, had sent the parcel to Salet in Bangladesh, which was then sent to Dhaka. The original consigner, Salman Shera, is the son of Aslam Shera, a notorious Pakistan-based ISI dealer in FICN active since the late 1990s. Separatists, be it terrorists and be it secessionists. Pakistan has been funding them actively, giving them moral and political support, 
both at national and international level as well as funding them through hawala transactions. Before demonetization, the Pakistan Embassy in Kathmandu was the nerve center for FICN operations and used Birganj town as its vital transit point for almost all fake currency notes entering India. Sources reveal that ISI transports fake notes through the state-owned Pakistan International Airlines or through the diplomatic bag to its missions in Dubai, Kuala Lumpur, Hong Kong and Doha. From these locations, couriers bring consignments to Kathmandu or Dhaka. Pakistan Army is an authority by itself. It's beyond the nation and ISI is Pakistan Army's arm of creating trouble wherever it wants. It's a trouble creator as far as the Pakistan Army is concerned. So ISI is above law. ISI does not follow any rules and procedures. In Pakistan, the deep state rules and ISI rules the deep state. In Bangladesh, Pakistan has been misusing diplomatic channels to bring and distribute consignments of fake Indian currency notes. Pakistani nationals posted at its High Commission in Dhaka have been expelled, formally and informally, for ferrying fake Indian currency notes and for terror financing activities. Pakistan has used all organs of the state to spread terrorism and that is why it is known as the fountainhead of terrorism. Not only Bangladesh, few years back, even the Pakistan's the attache in Sri Lanka was found to be having links with the ISI and therefore he was uh, <coughs> asked to leave that country. Pakistan has used all possible embassies around India to <coughs> strengthen them as the hub of ISI activities and it is doing so. The Financial Action Task Force in its report on money laundering and terrorist financing related to counterfeiting of currency categorically states India has reported large-scale use of counterfeit currency by both state and non-state actors from Pakistan to assist fund terrorist acts. The case studies in this regard furnished by India expose the scale and intensity of the problem. In particular, there is evidence of multiple bases being used to flood the country with counterfeit notes, thereby attempting to attack the economic security of the country besides using it to fund assist specific terrorist acts. The report further highlights that high-quality counterfeit Indian notes were printed in Pakistan and then smuggled into India to transit points at Dhaka, Bangladesh as well. The other routes to smuggle FICN was by smuggling through the India-Pakistan, India-Bangladesh and India-Nepal borders. Kashmir remained on the edge this week as Pakistan continued its malicious activities in the valley by unleashing deadly grenade blasts and inciting jihadists to march towards line of control. A jihadist rally towards LOC on Kashmir seemed like a sophisticated call for infiltration by Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan. We bring your report. A grenade attack in Kashmir's southern city of Anantnag injured more than 10 people, including a traffic policeman this week. The blast took place outside the district magistrate's office in Jammu and Kashmir's Anantnag district. Police sources said that terrorists hurled the grenade at the entrance of the office complex at around 11 a.m. This was the second grenade attack in the valley since the abrogation of Jammu and Kashmir's special status on August 5th. <laughs> अनंतनाग शहर के लालचोक इलाके में जो काफी बिजी रहता है वहां पर टेरिस ने एक ग्रेनेड लॉब किया जिसकी वजह से 10 लोग जख्मी हो गए जिनमें एक सिलेक्शन ग्रेड कांस्टेबल है ट्रैफिक पुलिस का और नौ सिविलियंस Terrorists across Kashmir border are on a continuous lookout to create mayhem in the valley and their ill-motivated endeavors receive even more encouragement when Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan goes on delivering hate speeches from international platforms and asks masses from POK to march towards the line of control. Agreeing with Imran Khan's command, a large number of people from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir marched towards the line of control on 6th of October. India condemned Prime Minister Imran Khan's provocative statements and called his behavior towards Kashmir as irresponsible and callous. There are big resentments within the Pakistan. 
the government of the, the Imran Khan has totally failed in all accounts, on all fronts, be it a economy or promise to create more jobs, a promise to create housing for poor people, uh, promise to um, build better infrastructure, promise to contain corruption. Imran Khan has not been able to deliver one of them. Uh, it's a failed state and he's a failed, uh, failed leader of that state. He has not been able to recover Pakistan out of these crises, as you know. He's become a big liability for the army itself. Now army has take, taken control of itself, you know, dealing with the businessmen, dealing with the other um, uh, uh, stakeholders or uh, important uh, people within the civil society, you know. It's never done by the army. No army does these things, you know, but only in Pakistan, because uh, 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 Imran Khan is unable uh, to deliver, you know, become totally irrelevant in Pakistan. So therefore, you know, he's trying to shift attention, giving a call, really motivated by religious leaders, you know, to march. It, it, the, 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 it, it's making it a religious march, you know, the holy march, you know, going towards the border he's doing. But I don't think he will succeed. The internal situation is so bad, you know. People are marching towards Islamabad, demanding, you know, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Islamic groups even going to march towards. Um, I mean, they have given a call, you know, that uh, Imran Khan has failed and should be changed. <laughs> At the Behez of LOC March, many terrorists found a new sophisticated route to continue their cross-border infiltration practices. While Pakistan Army facilitates infiltration by carrying out incessant ceasefire violation, the elected government, on the other hand, is allowing the infiltration through urban methods of rallies and unfounded marches. Yes, Mohammed, uh, घुस बैठे वो तो बहुत पुरानी बात है घुस बैठ तो हो रही है और होती रहेगी घुस बैठ करने में कब पाकिस्तान पीछे रहेगा पाकिस्तानी तो पॉलिसी है पाकिस्तान अपनी पॉलिसी बखूबी निभा रहा है कि वो घुट बैठ घुस बैठ करते रहेंगे सीज फायर का उल्लंघन करते रहेंगे जिस तरीके से उन्होंने स्टेटमेंट बनाई है कि वी विल ब्लीड इंडिया विद अ थाउजेंड कट्स वो कर रहे हैं India officially slammed Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan for asking his countrymen to march towards the line of control. Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Ravish Kumar said the Pakistan Prime Minister gave an open call for jihad against India by asking POK residents to march towards the LOC. Ahead of the Financial Action Task Force plenary meeting in Paris, the Asia-Pacific Division of Global Money Laundering Watchdog released its report saying Islamabad's compliance on terror financing and money laundering regulations was unacceptably low. The agency rebuked Pakistan for failing to implement UN Security Council resolution against Hafiz Saeed and other UN designated terrorists, including terror outfits like Jaish e Mohammed and Lashkar e Toiba. We bring your report. The chances are high that Pakistan will either be retained on the grey list or sent to blacklist during the FATF's crucial plenary meetings this month. According to a report by the Asia-Pacific Group of FATF, the country has complied with just one of the 40 recommendations set by the global anti-money laundering watchdog at the time of the country's inclusion in the list. This certainly increases the possibility of Pakistan receiving negative remarks from the FATF meeting and hence facing the consequences. Despite the fact that only 15 days earlier, when the group met in, in somewhere in Malaysia, in Southeast Asia, and gave them another two weeks, there was no forward movement by Pakistan at all. Pakistan has been given enough warnings. There has been no forward movement by Pakistan at all. In any case, their attempt to do mischief against India is increasing on, on, a, on, on a daily basis. And if we, we think that Pakistan will come under pressure because of the FATF, we are sadly mistaken, they are not going to do so. According to the report, out of FATF's 40 recommendations on curbing money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism, Pakistan was fully compliant only on one. It was largely compliant on nine, partially compliant on 26 and non-compliant on four recommendations. 
The report specifically emphasizes on Pakistan's failure in implementing UNSCR 1267 obligations by stating that Pakistan has not taken sufficient measures to fully implement UNSCR 1267 obligations against all listed individuals and entities, especially those associated with Lashkar e Toiba, Jamaat ud Dawa, and Falah Insaniyat Foundation, as well as the groups. It should adequately identify assets and understand its money laundering and terror financing risks, including transnational risks and risks associated with terrorist groups operating in Pakistan, such as Daesh, Al Qaeda, Jamaat ud Dawa, Falai Insaniyat Foundation, Lashkar e Toiba, Jaish e Mohammed, Haqqani Network, and this should be used to implement a comprehensive and coordinated risk based approach to combating money laundering and terror financing. 34 countries want strict action to be taken against Pakistan. And they said out of 40 issues on which Pakistan had to act, almost 37 issues they've been, Pakistan has been found wanting. And out of the 30 other, 31 other issues that they had given to Pakistan, they found them that only in one, they, Pakistan has made slight move forward movement. In 30, they have not made any movement at all. So Pakistan remaining in grey list is something which is a boon for India boon for the international community and a total setback for Pakistan because Pakistan was absolutely convinced that now that FATF is under the presidentship of China, that China would be able to bail them out. But China's all attempts have been absolutely befuddled. The report clearly disagreed with Pakistan's self-assessment that it only faces medium category risks saying that national regulators like the State Bank of Pakistan and the Securities and Exchange Commission of Pakistan had very limited understanding of money laundering and terror financing regimes. The FATF report, which was published by APG, comes a week before the agency decides whether to retain Pakistan in a grey list of countries with inadequate controls over terrorism financing. In June this year, the FATF had warned Pakistan to act decisively against terror financing or face consequences. Moving on to Afghanistan, Taliban terror group in the country has vowed to continue attacking the security forces and civilians. Rattled after US broke peace deal with Taliban, the terror group has launched a slew of suicide attacks on US troops in Afghanistan. We have a report. At least 10 people were killed after a minibus carrying recruits for the Afghan security forces was hit in a suicide attack carried out by Taliban terror group in the eastern city of Jalalabad in Afghanistan. The suicide bomb detonated in a rickshaw near the minibus, injured 27 others also. The injured included recruits and many civilians who came in the range of the suicide blast. <laughs> Jalalabad has remained a scene of frequent attacks by the Pakistan-backed Taliban and the Islamic State. In another explosion by Taliban at Ghazni University in southeast Afghanistan, at least 23 students were wounded. Two of them are in critical condition. The explosion occurred inside a classroom at Ghazni University. The Taliban terror group has vowed to continue attacks on security forces and civilians until the snapped peace deal with US is forced again. A spokesman for the terror group Zabuila Mujahid has stated that until there is no agreement with the US, we will continue the attacks on US troops and we will not talk to the Kabul administration under the government's title and we have denied such talks before. Although the U.S. has withdrawn from any peace agreement with Taliban, the terror group has approached Pakistan to endorse the peace deal. U.S. talks with the Taliban to withdraw troops and end the 18-year Afghan war were snapped last month by the U.S. President Donald Trump after a U.S. soldier was killed in an attack by Taliban terrorists. The stringent action of U.S. to break down from peace deal with Taliban may have turned the terror group even more violent, but a relatively peaceful progression of presidential elections last month has certainly given a hope of calm in the future. Moving on, Pakistan not only has a poor track record of harboring terrorism, but it has been facing criticism for human rights violations as well. 
The terrorist group operating from the Pakistani soil are a threat to peace and development in the South Asia and West. My colleague Ravi Khandelwal recently spoke to Joanna Barakova, a research analyst at European Foundation for South Asian Studies on Pakistan's state-sponsored terrorism and its likeliness of getting blacklisted in FATF. Here are a few excerpts. Afghanistan also, the government in Afghanistan, they gradually, you know, blames Pakistan for supporting the Taliban. So, do you believe that they are still earning the uh, support from Pakistan? Uh, Pakistan has a history of sheltering, supporting, providing the necessary infrastructure and weapons to uh, numerous terrorist organizations in the region, including the, the Taliban. Um, so, in that sense, yes, Afghanistan has the legitimate concern that uh, Pakistan is sheltering those terrorist groups and uh, actually supporting them to, to launch a war against, uh, um, against the interests of Afghanistan. Pakistan has been facing, you know, uh, chances of, you know, black, uh, blackout by FATF mm -hmm. because of sheltering uh, the Taliban and many other terrorist outfits. So, do you believe that Pakistan is taking any sort of action against these uh, outfits? Uh, currently, as it has been seen, especially in the latest uh, Asia-Pacific Asia uh, uh, group meetings, is no. Uh, they have been uh, um, warned and they, uh, that um, they have not been fulfilling uh, the recommendations that were uh, given to them. Uh, and especially with actually the cold, uh, the, um, the, the fact that the U.S. Taliban peace talks are now um, dead, um, Pakistan does not even have um, the protectionism which maybe it had earlier from the U.S. Uh, with, uh, in regards to the upcoming FATF review. The Pakistani Prime Minister, in one of his interactions uh, in the United States, you know, he said, the country is still having, you know, 30 to 40,000 uh, uh, militants or mm -hmm. you can say terrorists. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Prime Minister himself is claiming, you know, that uh, yes. his country is sheltering uh, the large number of terrorists. Yes. Mm -hmm. which, um, which eventually it actually proves what a lot of human rights bodies, uh, organizations, uh, activists have been claiming for years is the fact that indeed Pakistan is supporting terrorist organizations like Lashkar e Taiba, Jaish e Mohammed, Hezbollah Mujahideen, the Taliban for years and uh, the fact that uh, the Prime Minister of Pakistan confirms that uh, actually shows the level of, of understanding in the country as well. And with that we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Surbhi Sharma signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.